Thank you, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. And of course, in the name of all my colleagues and from the support of our epidemiologists, I have the privilege to present a nosocomial outbreak of multi-resistant ears beyond positive Klebsiella pneumonia in a neonatal intensive care unit in Port-au-Prince in Haiti from July 2014 from September 2015. So, Cuyo, it's an emergency center from obstetrics, complicated objectives based in Port-au-Prince since 2010. It's an MSF OCA project. It's a container hospital after the earthquake, and it's more specialized in maternal complication and had a neonatal intensive care unit, NICU. And from 2015, we admitted more than 20,000, 26,000 neonatal admission. So why how would break nosocomial outbreak? Because we identified the germ, it was Klebsiella pneumoniae and give a sepsis. As you know, it's an enterobacteria and gram-negative bacille, extended spectrum lactamas, and producing strands. Often multi-resistant to antibiotics and increasing public health problem in specialized hospital. So for your background, you know that a neonatal sepsis, a blood sepsis, infection on specific clinical presentation, and more or less it's a nosocomial outbreak, and many studies show that Klebsiella is responsible for more than 20 outbreaks in NICU. So in historical for more nosocomial infection, we had the first case on early July 2014, and you usually increase in neonates and usually high level of mortality from 10% to 26%. Suspected nosocomial infection with highly resistant bacteria. We described the epidemiologic curve and microbiologic finding and control measure over the next 15 months. Case classification was two times clinical types. From the 1st of July, clinical types were more about prolonged a refill a prolongation, and we had even abdomen distended, and of course, tachypnea. For microbiological classification, we had confirmed ESBL Klebsiella pneumonia by blood culture, by other sample like swabs and perinatal nose. We had confirmed other microbes by blood culture, confirm other microbe by other sample, and unconfirmed one with no microbe detect. The epidemiologic cue can show that we had the first cases from the beginning of July, and of course it can show that we had the following peak from 34, 34 cases from beginning of December. And for Lord, we had more cases, but what is important on the Q, epidemic curve that our measures make us control the infection. And even we had small peaks, but not from, from the beginning one. Our cohort analyzes, analyzes two risk factors. It was more gestational age and birth weight that was very specific from other factors like root of delivery, Afghan, or others. What is important too that from blood specimen or swab specimen, all of them shows that imipenem was least resistant from as antibiotic, and ampicillin was the last, the more resistant from antibiotic. Clinical management shows that finally we need to adjust our prophylaxis, and we had three lines, the first line on Pigenta and the second line on Micacin and Septacidine. And finally, thanks for MSF, we had the third line with Meropenem. These are due by control measures implemented. So first one was coordination about the septicemia. Committee that work with Watson, infection control, water and sanitation, lab medical, that was a committee to really control the infection. And a lot of efforts was made too, too for hand hygiene, use of alcohol gel to implement it in the world, and most too to control clinical management of HIV medication for neonates. And of course, all of our efforts were made on cleaning and disinfection protocol of material in all the hospital. 
case fatality ratio was that you can see from this slide that normally blue shows you that the number of cases and red show the number of deaths. So as you can see from the three period, the case ratio fatality <laughs> decreased from July to September 2015. And those are make with all that efforts that make from the measures that we put on the hospital. Our limitation, of course, this is a big hospital from most than 6,000 delivery per year, and it's a high turnover hospital with high bed occupancy rates, difficulty in implementing and sustaining control measures because we are always running off high bed occupancy. For surveillance, we have sent off serial code data from the beginning of July, but for now, we have a clinical case definition for sepsis not distinct and may have include non-specific babies with other conditions. And of course, we have limited microbiology confirmation. Discussion and conclusion, I would break off highly resistant pathogen in NICU, providing complex medical care in a low resource setting like Haiti. Access to high quality laboratory allowed us to detect and diagnose the problem on time. And communication was a prime importance in finding solution. And of course, multi-sectorial response was required. <coughs> Antibiotic resistance and nosocomial infection are a current reality that MSF needs to start addressing. Many MSF fertility probably experience similar things. And, neona and neonates in NICU are particularly vulnerable. Control measures target to reduce morbidity and reduce impact. Our next steps are systematic surveillance of all neonates on antibiotic, antibiotic treatment, appropriate treatment, monitoring of colonizing pathogen MDR and ELSBL, monitoring of impact of IPC measures, what is very important, and strengthen IPC across the hospital and hygiene, switch to alcohol just based hygiene. So we need to really take all of patient and staff in Cuyo Hospital and of course the MOH in the country. Thank you for your attention.